Well, then you'll like to know that the conjugations of the different verbs express the number. How's that? Actions may be carried out by one person or several people. It's not the same if I say, I've lent my markers, than if I say, we've lent our markers. Well, if the actions are performed by a single person, they're singular. For example, I've lent my markers. If I say, you've lent your markers, it's also singular. The same as, he's lent his markers. They're all actions performed by just a single person. What if they're performed by several people? We say that the verb is a plural action. For example, we've lent our markers. If talking about lending, it is always better to have plural actions. It's also important to know who has or have carried out the action. The verbs cannot tell us that. We could be talking in the first person singular. I skip the rope. Or the second person singular. You skip the rope. Or the third person singular. She skips the rope. It's easy. The first is a person who speaks. The second, the one who listens to or to whom the first person speaks to. And the third is a person we speak about. The first person plural is we, because we are the ones who speak, the ones telling about skipping the rope. You expresses the persons we address to and they who we're talking about. Always bear in mind that subjective pronouns will be used as a subject of the verb, that is, in a nominative function. If I say they, the verb will be skip. If I say she, the verb will be skips. They decline to reflect number, person and case. I'll write a sentence on the board and you'll tell me what the action in it is. You'll have to identify the verb in that sentence, right? Last night we saw a film on TV. Saw is the verb. What we did last night. Very good. What about in this sentence? I always play cards with my brother. Play. That's easy because I always play cards. But now I want you to name those verbs you found in the sentences. To name a verb, we use its infinitive form. The infinitive may be preceded by to. That is, as if we said that the name of saw is to see. In the case of the second verb, what Matt loves doing is to play. We're trying to find the infinitive form of some verbs. All words and of course verbs too, have a part which never changes. That's called the stem of the word. If I say, yesterday we played a football match, what's the verb? It's played and the infinitive to play. Good. So, if we take out the ending ed, what remains is the stem, play. That part of the verb which will never be changed, even when we say played, plays, or playing. Besides the infinitive, there are also the gerund and the participles, verbs such as playing, looking, and starting. Belong to the first group. They're gerunds. Yes, in contrast, within the second group, that is, the participles. We may find taken, read, and looked. Great. It's important to remember that they aren't conjugated. Yes, but we, the first person plural now, feel like having a sandwich and skipping the rope. Well then, I, the first person singular, will let you go to the break for a while. What's the mystery, Matt? What have you got there? I'd like to show you something. It's a present I want to give my dad on his birthday. I love it, Matt. Let's see it. I'm anxious. It is a comic about my dad's life. It starts when he is born in Hackney, in East London. It reads, He is born in Hackney. He's a funny kid, but somehow grouchy. He's six and starts the first year at school to learn how to read and write once and for all. I like it, Matt, but I think you should check out the tenses you've used to give your comic a sense of past action. I'll use the past tense for those actions in the past, the present tense for present actions, and the future for actions that will happen. Congratulations, Matt! Besides, I must check the use of the subjective pronouns. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and answer the questions. You can also click the links on the right to continue learning and click the like button. We appreciate your help. See ya!